All right. So uh, um, overall, uh, we need to be aware of what types of collections are available. And by all means, this is not a complete um, a list of uh, Java or, or diagram of Java collection classes. Uh, essentially, but very popular collection classes are um, uh, the hash set, the array list, the link list, hash map, and tree map. And we will be visiting them and specifically talking about them. In particular, what's not here is there, there are also a set of Q uh, type of collections where essentially you have uh, one side of the Q where you deposit elements. They're all uh, queued up. And then on the other side, you're extracting elements. So th those are more specialized when you have a situation where you want your program to um, to execute a series of jobs of some sort. Uh, you don't know how much time it may be taking, and you may even ha try to execute these jobs in parallel. But to begin with, you need to queue up your job somehow. So what's not part of this particular diagram, it doesn't show you this type of collection, for example. There's a number of queues that are available. Um, and uh, but. But what we have here on our screen is uh, our very popular, very generic, very general, general, general purpose level collections. And so uh, we can talk about uh, situations where which one would be a better choice. Now, at the top, so I kind of ran through this uh, low level in this hierarchical organization. The shaded uh, boxes at the top are actually uh, interfaces. They're all interfaces. Uh, so you cannot, uh, you cannot create a map. You have to choose whether it's a tree map or a hash map. And tree map, by the way, is like sorted. Whereas a hash map it doesn't, is, isn't necessarily sorted, but still keeps a tree of things. right? But once created, you can use map interface to access your collection. Because once created, hash map and tree map will have similar interface, but internally the storage will be different. And hash map, in some cases, may be quicker, uh, quicker, faster uh, data storage to locate and, and manipulate data inside of it. But at the same time, in some situations, you really need to be able to sort uh, the, the elements inside the tree uh, collection. In that case, you will be choosing this this other one. But once created, and this is really a true story with all interfaces, is that if you have a uniform interface, you can have multiple classes that implement that interface. And so your program just really has to know once, which and make this decision once, which class to use. But beyond that point, you can be using this interface, and all code will be beyond creation will be the same for hash map and tree map. It's just uh, a kind of uh, a, a part of the design that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, we're offered here with those uh, generic collections. And, and uh, we'll basically, by example, we'll, we'll explore those things. Array list typically is the first choice for a collection. Because, in, because perhaps this is the fastest type of storage. Because ArrayList is using Java Array uh, internally, part of its implementation. Its storage type inside is a Java Array. Right? And Java Array is yet another primitive level that you can get to. But essentially, ArrayList wraps around Java Array and makes it uh, look like it's dynamic in size. Of course, uh, it has a certain capacity. When the, the capacity is reached, well, make no mistake, array list will be allocating a bigger array, maybe double size or whatever size you, you request, and will be relocating the data from your old array to the new array. So at times, it can be a little slower because it does some extra work, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel yourself. You don't have to uh, do all this um, you know, routine work uh, maintaining your storage uh, on your own. 
array list will do it as efficiently as it is as possible and uh, it has a very simple interface to it so you don't have to reinvent anything and people across multiple projects can quickly be on the same page uh, with array list the link list is uh, somewhat different uh, because a link list um, you can imagine this if you if we if for a second we forget about these generic collections and we'll say okay how does it compare or how does it scale with an array perhaps with arrays the fastest operation you can you can rely on is just uh, uh, sequentially appending some data to the, to an array the slowest piece of an array would be inserting something in the middle because if you're inserting something in the middle and you have this, you know, 8 megabyte size array, which is big, and you're trying to insert something in the middle, you really have to physically shift elements in a certain direction. And that's slow because it involves a lot of physical copying of data. Well, guess what? If you choose to use array list, the same problem will, will be, you know, uh, inherited by array list. Because internally, it stores everything inside a Java array. So insertion of elements in the array list will be slower than, say, appending elements to the array list. Uh, then, link list basically says, I will no longer be using an array list. Instead, I will be allocating each object, each element that you store in a link list uh, individually. And therefore, linked list will contain references to the next element and to the previous ele element, and again to the next element and the previous element. So inside the linked list, copying linked lists, uh, and even adding elements in many cases to the linked list will be slower than the array list. But where, where the linked list will give you better performance is when you have to insert when you often insert data in the middle at a random location inside your collection. Then array list will give you a higher performance. But even then, with the latest um, uh, CPUs with parallel execution and with, uh, with the fact that uh, a lot of information is cached uh, in memory, uh, in, in the CPU cache, uh, during the program execution, sometimes, uh, which would be could be really a strange, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, deviation from this general rule where uh, you know linked list can be faster. Uh, sometimes array list will still give you a better performance compared to a linked list. So it's a different topic. Um, I'm just telling you that um, uh, the reason why linked list does exist originally is compared to the array list that at certain levels, uh, you know, uh, array uh, a link list could give you better performance in certain uh, situations, but not all the time. So there is usually a trade-off uh, between the, those two. Uh, compared to lists, uh, hash set uh, is simply a set. Uh, which maintains a collection of unique objects. So set will basically reject non-unique entries. So if you want to have a set of integers, a hash set of integers, what it's going to do is just uh, it's going to uh, 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 you know provide a set of unique integers. Whereas array list really doesn't care what you store. You can store 50 uh, elements of the same kind, you know, the same data value and array list doesn't care. The set in general uh, is viewed as a set of unique uh, elements, right? So all elements in the set are unique. So these are, so then if you need a set of unique elements, you, s you choose perhaps hash set. It's not the only set available in Java, but uh, there's also sorted set. Uh, but uh, uh, that's an alternative to, to an array because uh, the, the, the behavior is different. So, um, 
Okay, so uh, besides besides these, you know, classes that are defined in Java API library, besides that, we have interfaces. So again, the approach is this. You choose a particular collection to use. Okay, you choose a particular collection to use. Create it, say new, new collection such and such. But beyond creation, you typically don't use that specific type to work with your collection. Instead, you just choose an interface. And if you want a set, well, you use a set. If you want a list, use a, use a list. If you want queue, which we discussed before, right, use queue, and so forth. So, again, we should soon switch to looking at concrete examples. But it's important to understand that besides generic classes, collection interfaces play a very crucial role in, in how we actually use and manipulate collections. It's just something else that we need to be aware of and, and be comfortable with. Again, with some examples, this will be an easier thing to, to, to discuss. So let's uh, move on.